This example shows you how to find geometric average returns when given prices and dividends. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. When solving geometric average return problems that involve both prices and dividends, it's helpful to understand this mathematical derivation. First of all, we need to know that total return is the sum of dividend yield and capital gains yield. The second line here puts that out as an equation. Div t plus 1 over p sub t is your dividends yield, and p t plus 1 minus p sub t over p sub t is your capital gains yield. All that t plus 1 means is occurring in the period after time t. So for instance, if we were looking for r4 here, we would be dividing both of these things by p sub 3. And we can do a little manipulation of this thing. If you'll notice, both of those items are divided by the price at time t, which makes total sense because that's what we had to invest in order to be able to get the price at time t plus 1 and the dividend at time t plus 1. So we can put all that together and get the third line, which is div t plus 1 plus p t plus 1 minus p sub t divide by p sub t. Now if we were to distribute that divide by p sub t throughout that entire parentheses, one of the things that we would see is that the last term would be minus 1 because minus p sub t divided by p sub t is equal to minus 1. And so the fourth line here actually just does that, pulls that minus 1 out to the side. And the rest of those terms remain over p sub t. Now if we add 1 to both sides, then we get the fifth line, which is 1 plus r sub t plus 1 equal to parentheses div t plus 1 plus p t sub plus 1 parenthesis divide by p sub t. Now why did we do that? Because when we find geometric average, one of the things that we do is take all those 1 plus r terms for the different periods and multiply them together. And so anywhere that we wanted to put in a 1 plus r, all we have to do is substitute the dividend plus the price at time t plus 1 divided by the price at time t. Just for an example, for that 1 plus r2 term, we could instead have the dividend at time 2 plus the price at time 2 divided by the price at time 1. And it would mean exactly the same thing. Now right now you're probably wondering why we do this. I'm going to show you shortly that this makes solving problems much, much easier. Okay, at this point I want you to get your calculator out. The TIBA2 Plus comes equipped with a memory, and it can remember more than one number, so we're going to utilize that fully. So here we have some information. We have the different times, times 0, 1, 2, and 3. We have the prices at those different times. We have the dividends at those different times, except for time zero. And then we have a column for our 1 plus r. And I want you to notice that we only have 1 plus r for times 1, 2, and 3. The reason is you always have to have the prior period price in order to be able to figure out a return. If we wanted to know the return at time zero, we would have to know the price at time negative 1. And that's information we simply don't have. Okay, now I want you to get your calculator out and we are first going to look at time 1. We're going to take the price of 11 and add 1 and hit equal. Now your calculator should say 12. Then I want you to divide by the prior price. That would be 10, the price at time 0. And right now your calculator should say 1.20. That represents 1 plus the return over period 1, which stretches from time 0 to time 1. 1.20 means that the return during this time period was 20%. And that makes sense because we had a dollar in capital gain and a dollar in dividends for a total of a gain of $2. 
2 divided by 10 is 20 percent. Now while you have that 1.2 up on your screen, I want you to look at your calculator. There's a button on the left hand side that says STO, that means store. I want you to hit that right now and then the number 1. In other words, store 1. We just stored that number, 1.2, in location 1 of your calculator. We'll need it later. Now I want you to hit the clear button and we are going to figure out 1 plus r for time 2. How do we do that? We take 10, the price at time 2, plus 2, the dividend at time 2. So that's a total of 12. And now we are going to divide by the price at time 1 which is 11. So now your calculator shows 1.09 and the 09 repeats on and on forever. So we're roughly talking about a 9.1 percent return from time 1 to time 2. While you have that number up on your calculator screen, I want you to hit store 2 and then clear. Finally, we need to find the return between time 2 and time 3. We are going to do exactly the same as we've been doing. We're going to take the price at time 3 of 12, add the dividend at time 3 of $1.20, that gives us $13.20, and then divide by the price at time 2, which is 10. So we've got 13.2 divided by 10, which gives us 1.32. And I want you to hit store 3. So now we should be able to clear out our calculator and say recall 1 and see it say 1.2. Recall 2 and see 1.09090909 and so forth. And recall 3 give us 1.32. If you don't see those things right now, I want you to go back and go through this slide again. So just rewind the video a little bit and go through this slide again until you can get those numbers to work for you. Now we are finally ready to calculate our geometric average return. And it's pretty simple. Here's the formula at the top for geometric average return. N is simply the number of returns that you have to work with. In our case, it's 3. So what we're really looking for is 1 plus R1 times 1 plus R2 times 1 plus R3 to the 1 third power minus 1. But those numbers that we stored in the calculator represent 1 plus R1, 1 plus R2, and 1 plus R3. So it's quite easy at this point for us to say recall 1 times, recall 2 times, recall 3 equal. And right now your calculator should say 1.728. And what I want you to do next is to hit the button directly over the number 9. It says y to the x. That's how we raise things to an exponent on the calculator. And I want you to open the parentheses, starting with the parentheses above 7, and put 1 divide by 3, close parentheses, that's the one above the 8, and say equal. And so by raising this to the 1 third power, we now have 1.2. Two. And the final step is to subtract 1. And that gives us a return of 0.2. Now that's in decimal form. If you wanted that in percentage form, you would merely multiply by 100%, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1. And you would get the result of 20%. That means the geometric average return for this problem is 20%.